this form of protest would not be tolerated in front of the number one citizen of any country in Africa. In Washington, D.C., just at the foot of White House, there is an old woman that has been camping here calling upon the world and Obama's administration to renounce Israel as a country. Israel is allowed to have mass destruction weapons, arsenals, and nuclear weapons. Security agents are never tired of seeing her every morning demonstrate, which has made her a tourist attraction. She is just one of millions of people in the U.S. that protest against government from different states. And I think Uganda is a good case in terms of how we have uh, advocated that the government of Uganda and other governments, uh, that the opposition should, should be in a position to express its views and to operate politically without intimidation. If you allowed everybody to demonstrate from wherever he wants, at any time he wants, you will create, you, you create untold scales. There have been cases of human rights violation mainly during the police crackdown on opposition protests. On several occasions, tear gas and anti-riot police have been deployed to quell opposition protests deemed illegal. These protests have most times turned violent and there are reports that protesters have been brutally beaten when breaking up these demonstrations. In the recent past, the opposition pressure group Activists for Change A4C faced off with the police on many occasions during their assemblies. The main contention was on whether they need to inform or seek police permission for their planned rallies. I think the message that we try to send broadly is that um, allowing people to, to come together to peacefully protest, to, to express their views, is part of the way that you maintain a stable, ongoing um, society. The police and opposition have continuously accused each other of inciting violence during protests. But according to Wyckoff, who has also lived in Uganda for some time, both sides need to act responsibly. Uh, a goal of everyone concerned should be to avoid violence and to have a political system that works and to build the democratic institutions. Also not spared at these opposition rallies are members of the fourth estate who have called for the respect of media freedom. Despite the fact that human rights are inherent, but some of them have been violated like in Uganda and other parts of the world. However, it is believed that enjoying the human rights does not matter whoever is the president of the day, but a constitutional mandate. You know, many of the goals that the governments, including the Ugandan government, outline as their primary goals for governance, like fighting corruption, are impossible to achieve without a free press. Still Biarhanga, NTV.